you probably think you are about to start a story about mafia crime, shootings, stabbings, and piles of bodies. I'm sorry if I've disappointed you. Vendetta is the name of our boat. Yeah. The boat I gave my husband for our fifth wedding anniversary. Well, it's not exactly ordinary, it's made of, like, two yachts. Oh, yes. I remember it's a catamaran, it's a big thing, you know, it's like a sailing apartment with all the comforts of home. No, I'm not rich enough to take $270,000 out of my purse and pay for a luxury boat, but my dad, he loves us. Me and my little sister Agnes, and I love my Eric. Well, you can't help but love him. He's as handsome as Adonis, he has a lean lean body with broad pecs and abs. He's got strong arms, legs, and ass. Yes, just the way I like it. When he was young, he was a gymnast, he went pro and came in 11th place at the 2004 USA Gymnastics Championships, well, remember, that's when Paul Ham was champion. And, you know, Eric wasn't upset at all, I was pregnant at the time, and I gave birth to Melissa on August 26. My husband gave up sports and took care of his daughter, he babysat Melissa as passionately as he used to on that treadmill. Yes. Besides, my husband is smart, you know, a master's in linguistics and world literature author of two novels can't be stupid, perhaps you've read Green Eyes of the Prairie and Evening Floors. No. You haven't? Well, well, those two books didn't make my Eric world famous. He didn't get rich or famous from his writing, but I thought he was happy anyway. Oh, right, I meant the boat. Dad bought the boat. He always wanted a son, but fate gave him two daughters. He'd grown fond of Eric like his own and spared nothing for him. Piercingly blue sports car, Eric Button, Lexus, a toy stood out in the stream of cars, and he was the only one in Houston. Okay. Here we go. The yacht Vendetta was hanging out in Trinity Bay, 12 miles offshore. It was the first time I'd ever taken a boat trip I'm ashamed to say I can't swim at all, and I'm stuporously hiccupingly afraid of the sea. But this time, I let my husband talk me into a little trip Eric promised me the weather would be windless and I had nothing to fear. Take off that vest. He chuckled. There's no chance of a wreck I assure you. No, I answered in a panic. No way. No. You can laugh all you want, but I'm not taking it off. Eri took out a spinning rod, some artificial fish, put it all together, and started throwing it into the water, hoping to catch. I don't know what he wanted to catch. I went up to the upper deck and lay down on a bunk. I lounged in the sunshine and took out some sun tan ointment from my bag and rubbed it on everything below my waist. I put my bikini panties aside let my butt tan, so I lay on my stomach in my orange life jacket with my feet facing my desperate angler. After ten minutes of buzzing and crackling of all his devices, Airy shrieked and crackled especially vigorously, apparently, some fish had been tempted by his plastic gimmick. Lois, look what I pulled out. I'm up. Yes, indeed. Eric lifted a macro about a foot long by the gills. Well, he deserves my applause. I also gave him a kiss and went back to laying back on the sunbed. About twenty minutes later, my husband again shouted something unintelligible and frantically fiddled with his gear. I thought, a grown man, a linguist, he could have shouted something literary, even in emotion. No, he screams like a Papuan. Eric went up to my floor. Look, Lois. Well, aren't I great? You're a great man, hunter, and gatherer. I complimented him and lay back down, I didn't hear my wet feet on the stairs. My husband didn't seem to move, I turned around to see what was going on with him. Turns out nothing was going on, Eric just stood there with his eyes fixed on my naked butt slowly, slowly, he shifted his gaze to my face and said quietly, fuck this fishing trip, he threw the rod down with the fish he caught and walked resolutely toward me, I groaned, sat up put my hands out. Eric, wait, Eric, you're crazy. It's like we're on stage, what if someone swims in? And we're here. Let's go downstairs. 
I don't have time for this, ground my husband and put his arms around me and sucked on my lips. Turn around, the door commanded helping me onto my elbows and knees, sitting down, Ari lightly rubbed my hedgehog with his finger, then sank his lips into it. That's where I melted. How did he do that? He knows how to get me hot. During our nine years of marriage, he had studied my body inside and out down to the last detail. Eric knew all my preferences and spoiled me constantly. From my crotch, he crawled his lips to the balls of my buttocks and immediately pulled away slurping and hissing something sweary. Ugh. Cream. It's bitter. I took advantage of the moment, twisted out from under my husband, jumped up and went to the stairs wiggling my hips, not for nothing in my youth, learned to dance, bachata, she didn't get far. Eric liked Tarzan with a loud, jumped down without touching the steps. I shrieked and rushed down the hall, but my husband caught up me in one leap picked me up in his arms and dragged me to the sleeping quarters. He spun me around on the bed, shamelessly touching and squeezing my treasures and growled. Take that vest off, no. I resisted. No way. Do whatever you want darling, but don't touch the vest. What an animal, always like this. I knew Eric hadn't gotten to the finish line yet that I was in for round two, and with sweet agony in my loins, I anticipated the second burst of my lust my husband did not let me down and met my expectations. The second and following times, I always experience particularly vivid sensations my whole psyche goes into overdrive. I don't know about others, but I, at such moments vividly feel with my pussy the taste of the rod shoved into my gut. I can hear the sunlight ringing and see the waves of odor from our heated bodies. My second explosion came at the same time as his shot. We squirmed and howled like two battling beasts clutching each other in our arms. It was total, true bliss. Eric collapsed on the bed, wiping sweat from his face with the palm of his hand and breathing heavily. After a minute, came to his senses, got up from the bed, and put on his underwear. Then he leaned over me kissed my nose, and lifted me into his arms. I wrapped my arms and legs around my husband like a pole clinging to him with all my might. Eric carried me to the deck and brought me to the side. Honey, please let me go, he said, looking me in the eye. No way, Eric. There's no way I'm letting you go, then my husband said more harshly. Louis, be sensible and get off me. No, Eric, I'm sorry but I can't unhook myself from you. Damn it, his lover his Louis, let go of me right now. Do you hear me? I didn't say anything, he swung briefly and punched me in the side where only the ties from my life jacket were, I still thank God I didn't pass out. Eric tried to pull me away from his body and hissed, get off me. You fool. He didn't feel me pull the stun gun out from under my vest, it was a powerful thing. I tried it on myself for half an hour before I got hit. The device jabbed into my husband's side and crackled. Eric cried out and collapsed to the deck, writhing in pain. I didn't stop. I put the contacts to his neck and pressed the button again. Honey stretched into a string and shuddered. He trembled all over every muscle in his body. It was strange to see his marble face with whitened lips, and now the test shot. The victim twitched briefly and fell silent. Damn it. I think he broke my ribs. It was impossible to breathe fully, but I had to finish what I'd started. Shoving the taser under my breast behind my vest, I dragged my husband over to the side of the boat shrieking and writhing in pain. Then I sat down and with all my remaining strength threw my legs over the railing, and I fainted I lay on the deck for two minutes. No more. I woke up to screaming over the side. Lois. Eric was yelling. Lois, what are you doing, why are you doing that? I grunted and groaned holding my swollen side with the palm of my hand and walked to the stern. My husband tried to climb out onto the lower deck bouncing in the water and trying to grab the edge, but his hand slid across the rounded and smooth plastic, finding no foothold. Eric saw me. Lois, honey. Why are you doing this to me? Honey, I answered him. I know all about you and that slit Robinson. I hired a detective, maybe you know a private agency called Demora. Well, 
It doesn't matter now. The pain in my side twisted me again and made me groan. I listened to your conversations, Lois, the swimmer pleaded. It was just talk. Nothing serious, you see, Eric, if you'd left me for that bitch, Cheryl, I wouldn't have made a fuss, and I'd have given you half of everything we have, but you wanted it all, it was greed that killed you. Lois sweetheart. My husband urged. Please lower the gangway, I'll come aboard and we'll settle all our misunderstandings. I swear I won't hurt you, why would I do that? I love you. God, I wanted to put down that fucking gangway and cuddle up to that dear body. That bastard, but reason told me it was extremely foolish to give in to emotion now. As soon as my husband's on deck, I'm going overboard. Probably with my head bashed in, from the fish locker, from under a pile of ice, I pulled a thermos and returned to the stern. Eric was persuasive. Lois, this is no time for tea. Honey, would you lower the gangway, please, I'm begging you. You know how good a swimmer I am. I'll still make it to shore, there's no need my love to play tragedy. It's unnecessary. Darling, I heard you two agreeing to kill me, do you understand? I heard it, and I saw it on the diskette. And also, you hit me, you hit me. If you didn't mean to kill me, why did you hit me? Lois, I was just scared, this is a conversation that's going nowhere. I opened the thermos and dumped its contents into the water, honey, what is this? My husband got worried. It's chicken blood. I bought it yesterday at Gross Crack, Eric panicked. Lois, don't. Don't do this to me. Have you thought you bastard what would it be like for my kids if I died, who would take care of them? I didn't wait for an answer, I sat down on the deck and started unscrewing the bottom of the thermos, as I pulled it apart, there was a short shout from Erica Stern. I crawled over to the rail, that was it. There was no one to talk to, only the spot of a powerful storm off the side of the boat indicated that tragedy had struck here, throwing the thermos parts overboard. I felt I was losing consciousness, the pain in my side and the nervous shock had sharpened my brain and it began to go out. I blacked out again. I don't know. How much time had passed. But it didn't seem like much, the sun in the sky had moved a little, I had to go home, though I didn't have the strength to get up. My side was monstrously swollen and apparently bleeding internally. Crawling, I made my way to the wheelhouse. On the way I stopped several times, lying down to rest and soothe the pain in my ribs. During one such stop, I pulled my taser out of my vest and tossed it into the water. My father was waiting for me on the dock. I called him as I entered the phone service area and asked him to meet me. My father looked anxiously at the boat and asked, Where's Eric? And then I cried. The fear, the pain, betrayal, Daddy, Eric, he drowned. He was fishing and he was pulled overboard. I tried to help him, but the deck was wet and slippery. I hit the rail. Daddy. I couldn't do anything. Oh my god. Oh my god. He's gone. Daddy took me to the hospital, and there I was, lying in a room with a bandaged chest and in four. Detectives came by, wrote down what they could make out of my story through bitter tears, sympathized, Side. They complained about the carelessness of the fishermen and the regular recurrence of such cases. Tomorrow, they will let me go home to my daughter and son. Life goes on. 